for me because I'm not from you. Yeah. I got a pair of coach earrings that I still wear. Coach earrings. Coach earrings. For coaching or from the brand Coach? From the brand Coach. Mm. And I still wear them. So I think that was a good, useful gift. That was pretty good. Yeah. What about you? Someone wrote and recorded and produced a musical about me once. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's hard a pretty to high beat. bar. Yeah. I, I just have some earrings that I still like. <laughs> yeah. And once I said, like, why can't there be shirts with, like, Audrey Hepburn on it for men? And someone made me one. Oh, that was pretty sweet. That's nice. She was quite the artist. So she drew a thing yeah. and then got it put on a shirt. Oh, I like that. Uh, I just wear that shirt again. I put it away for a long time. Oh. I'm going to break it out. <laughs> it's all you. <laughs> well, should we start our romantic episode? Yes. So romantic. So romantic. Well, welcome everyone to a very romantic episode of I Love This, You Should Too. We got the candles out. We're sitting by the fire with my lovely (laughs) co-host, Samantha Coach Earrings Randawa. And I'm your other host. My name's Indy, some kind of musical Randawa. Are you feeling romantic? Um, yeah, we just had a very romantic time on the couch <laughs> watching metalworking shows. <laughs> it's it's not a romantic time right now because it's actually like the afternoon isn't romantic. Not really, no. Not often. No. I go like I'm having a nice weekend because we're spending lots of time together. But yeah. I don't think anything we've done is like especially romantic. Well, I'm not going to get into things. But last <laughs> night, it was good. I guess, yeah. We went out for dinner at a little date. But we're not going to talk about our romantic no. life because I don't want any of you to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> but what we are going to do over the next couple of episodes is bring you movies and maybe some books mm-hmm. that are all romantic in nature. It's yeah. romance month. It's romance month. It's not Valentine's, but it is... This is going to come out over our anniversary, maybe. I think so, yeah. So that's something. So it's we're, romantic for us. We're celebrating Romance Month on the second anniversary of our wedding month. There you go. <laughs> well, let's get into it. We're each going to have a spoiler-free romantic thing of the fortnight, and yep. then Sam will let us know what big romantic movie we're watching. Yes. So why don't you start us off? What's your romantic pick of the week? Um, my romantic thing of the fortnight is a book, which no one is surprised about, and it's called Maybe Once, Maybe Twice, and it plays with that old trope of if we're still single when we're blank age, we should get married. Oh, yeah. And this follows a woman named Maggie who made that vow with two different people um, at two very different times in her life and well, you shouldn't be double dealing like that no that's on you Maggie absolutely not um but this book centers around her 35th birthday party and both of these men show up and it's expect- ready to get married ready to get <laughs> that's married. fucked up without like talking to her before no that's that's on them then yeah you should bring that up like hey remember that deal yeah well, where are we up. where are we sitting on that um, so you get to kind of see her figure out her feelings for two men that she had feelings for way back when, and, uh, you get to see her kind of come to terms with where she is in her life and then also where these men would fit in with her current life, because obviously you change and grow as you get older and now she's 35 and she has a completely different life than she did when she made these promises. So I think this was a fun book because you get lots of like flashbacks, but you also get a lot of like wondering about the future. And uh, Maggie needs to figure out what she wants in her life so she can figure out who she wants in her life. Figure it out. Figure it out, Maggie. Figure it out. Um, I enjoyed this one. You get to see um, Asher, her boyfriend from summer camp as a child. I feel like the name Asher comes up in a lot of the books. Yeah, actually. That's like... A cool name for yeah. this generation, but of older people, yeah. but not old, old, like our old. But not like boring, like Asher's like a catch. Usually. Like an Asher. <laughs> um, and then you also get to see Garrett, who is a hedge fund manager. Um, and you get to see Maggie try and figure out whether she wants Garrett or Asher. Of course, I've never read this book <laughs> and I shouldn't... Uh, 
project of how it should go. We should, should pick neither. It shouldn't. It should be like. Um, why do either of you deserve this? Yeah. What have I, you done? I haven't I, talked to you in however many years. Yeah. I also feel like, like you move on and you change. And so you shouldn't go back to the past. Yeah. Making it, how old was she when we made, she made these two respective deals? Um, so summer camp, I think she was in like high school. Oh yeah. I, I can't remember. What is a high age. school me know? Not a goddamn thing. Oh God. This is a very, it's very good that I'm not married to my high school boyfriend. No, me neither. <laughs> But um, and then uh, Garrett was like college or like young 20s. Yeah, that that no. shouldn't hold up. No. First of all, these two guys should have moved on with yes. their lives. It's one thing if you've been like, near that person and talking to them this entire time. But uh-huh. just to be like, hey, I made a deal 20 years ago. I'm going to go marry this random person who I really don't know anything about. Yeah, exactly. That seems like a bad, bad idea. It really does. But um, it makes for a good book. It was a fun book. Yeah, it was fun. It was um, kind of light. It's uh, only 350 pages long. So it's like a quick read. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for something light and semi-romantic, you can check out Maybe Once, Maybe Twice by Allison Rose Greenberg. And if you're looking for something kind of light and kind of romantic you can go back to so many things of the week or of the fortnight from samantha because yes. you've really cornered the uh, podcast market on that that's your absolutely yes if you're looking for light fluffy romantic reads you can go back and yeah listen to any of my recommendations and maybe i should make like a goodreads list yeah for we can put that up in the show notes or maybe at the end of the year, you have your top 10 and you oh, that's just a do good them, drop them real quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we will figure that out for future episodes. But figure it out. Indy, what's your <laughs> spoiler-free th- romantic thing of the fortnight? Mine is perhaps just as romantic, but probably not as light. <laughs> Mine is the 2004 French romantic war drama a very long engagement, or originally titled Un Long Dimanche de Fiancé. Mm. I saw this back in 2004, and I don't know if I had seen it again since, oh. but when I think of romantic movies, it's always one of the ones that mm-hmm. jumps into my mind, but not one of the top ones because, you know, I had to do those for the big watch of coming course. up. yeah. So this was directed by Jean-Pierre Junet, who has done... A bunch of movies I like, but I was recently talking about him because he directed Alien 4, which is a piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) It's so bad. And he had no business directing an Alien movie. But you know what? He can direct a atmospheric, beautiful French World War I drama. He's very good at that. And he does a good job here. He directed uh, Amelie, which I think is probably his most famous one. Uh, Delicatessen and some other good stuff as well. I've seen Amelie and I remember liking it, but I think I saw it when it was new. So it's been a while. We were talking about it and you seem to have no recollection. So I feel like I should do that for one of my movies sure. at some point. Sounds good. And this also stars Audrey Tautou, who was the star of Amelie. Mm-hmm. So she is the lead in this along with uh, Gaspard Uliel. I don't know how to say that last name. And uh, Marianne Cotillard is in this as well. And she, I think this is before she got big. Because this is 2004. I don't know when she got real popular. And this was nominated for Academy Awards for Art Direction and Cinematography. And it is a visually beautiful movie. Like a lot of Junet's movies, he really picks a color palette and uh, goes with it. Mm -hmm. You could argue that it's a little too sepia. It's a little too nostalgia Uh. at some points. But he... He leans in, right? He doesn't uh, half-ass his color tones. He he goes for it, and he does that in this one. <laughs> so like I said, it's a romance primarily, but it has a lot of uh, war scenes, mm-hmm. and it's a mystery as well, because the premise of this movie is uh, Audrey Tautou's character has was engaged to her childhood sweetheart, and they met when they were like, I don't know, eight or nine or something in this little village in France. And Did they make a we'll get married at 35 <laughs> pact? No, they <laughs> uh, just stuck together. Oh. But then the war comes along. Mm. So they're engaged. He has to go to war. And she receives a letter informing her of his death. Oh. And she just doesn't believe it. She said, no, that's, that's not it. I could feel it in my heart. And 
the mystery of this is her going around and trying to piece together the story of what happened to her fiance. Mm -hmm. And it's him and five guys. And it's not like what happened to this heroic team that went off. They were all set to be executed by their own army. Oh, so they're not set up as a, as the the greatest heroes. In fact, some are straight up criminals, and it's her going around and trying to piece together what happened after the war has concluded. Mm -hmm. So she's been told that he's been dead for I think it's been a couple of years at this point. Oh, that's a and long he's time. been gone for a few years. So she's going around and doing all of the legwork, and when she's doing this, she's also hearing the stories of these other characters. And how their deaths have affected these people. Mm -hmm. So you get to see how the deaths of these five people who were executed by their own army. And how not black and white that is. Mm -hmm. How that these people still mean something to all of these people. Oh. So it is very much a movie about uh, uh, hope and not giving up hope. But it's equally a movie about despair. Hmm. And it's a movie about enduring love and it's a movie about the horrors of war and because of how it's placed usually when you give this premise you'd be like oh yeah but she's gonna find him at the end mm -hmm. when you start seeing where this movie goes you're like i don't know it could go either way because that's how like this movie is sad it is a sad yeah, movie sounds, a lot of the time sounds really sad it goes both ways and i i really love that about it and i love how you want to be on this journey with her and you want to get some closure for her Mm -hmm. And normally I would think these divergences into all of these other stories would take away from it, but it just makes this world so much more full. All of these characters who we, at the very beginning, were introduced just as um, this man was from this town, he did this. Uh -huh. And then we get to see who they were and not from their own actions as much, but maybe there's another love interest who's also trying to do this and to piece together what happened to her husband in the last days of his life and oh. how all of these deaths affect everyone and it, it does a lot deals a lot with the, the horrors of war and just how terrible that is for for everyone of course with the soldiers we get to see that happening but then we get to see how the lives of all the other people at home are affected just by their loss oh, okay. so it's a uh, it's a sad movie it's a heartfelt romance it's a war drama it's a mystery at its heart as well so it deals with all of those things without giving um, precedence or priority to one thing uh -huh. it allows everything to be to coexist it doesn't say like oh we can't deal with that we're a romance it just allows all of these emotions to come through and it doesn't really half-ass things a lot of romantic movies they have to dilute it with a comedy or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And it's not just a straightforward, heartfelt, romantic movie. And this is. And I feel like we don't get a lot of those anymore. And this was kind of a kind of a throwback to when those types of movies existed a little bit more. And I, I watched it again the other day. Uh, you know me, I'm down there working out, watching my French romances. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's how I watched it. So maybe not the best... Uh, environment for a rewatch but you know what it still holds up uh visually very good great performances across the board and a, a good story when i was watching it, i was like oh this should be a novel and of course i looked into it it was based upon a novel and i might want to watch that or might want to read that novel because i think the way this story unfolds Definitely seems like a novel, getting into all of these uh, side stories and what these characters mean to each other mm -hmm. works well in a novel. But they do a good job here with all of these time jumps. Sometimes there's a little bit of a fantasy in the time jumps or um, what people are thinking or what people are remembering. Oh. And some people remember things a little bit differently than others. And it seems hard to follow initially, but then you get to see the pieces all falling into place in mm -hmm. the end. So... I recommend it. It is called, in English, A Very Long Engagement from 2004. It's not streaming for free many places, but you can buy it. Or if you just ask me nicely, I'll lend you my copy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> of course you own it. <laughs> my DVD from 2004. Nice. Two discs. I haven't watched that second disc. Oh, Maybe wow. I should put that in. Two discs. Man. It Those was are the days. It was a time. Those are the days. <laughs> All right. Well, we got our things of the fortnight out of the way. 
Sam, what is our big watch for this week? So I am bringing something that I have previously talked about twice on the podcast in pre-episodes. Um, the first time was February 7th, 2022, when I talked about One True Loves, the book by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And then I also talked about this one when it was made into a movie on August 28th, 2023. And that was One True Loves, the movie. And we are going to watch the musical, the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> for next week, because this movie. Um, was fantastic. I cried at the end. Um, I think they did a really, really good job of bringing the book to life, um, which is something that I can be really critical about. And it was actually just exactly what I wanted to see from um, this book on screen. So I'm really excited to watch it. I hope you don't tear it apart. <laughs> oh, is that a, it sounded kind of like a challenge. No. Would I have reason to tear it apart? I think it's a really good romantic comedy. When was the last time I tore a movie apart? <laughs> We're going back to like episode nine and just like Bride Wars. Frankly, it deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right. Um, so we are going to watch the 2023 film When True Loves. It stars Philippa Sue, Simu Liu, and Luke Bracey. Um, and uh, we get to see a fantastic romantic comedy. Oh, it's a comedy? Yes. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yes. I thought it was just straight romance romance. No, it's a romantic comedy for sure. So in case people have missed the other times you have talked about this, can you give us a quick pitch? Yes, absolutely. So um, this movie book slash movie uh, centers on Emma, who uh, whose husband disappears in a helicopter crash and attempts to put her life back together. Um, and four years after the helicopter crash, Emma finds her old best friend, Sam, and they become inseparable. And then things change and Emma now has to choose between um, her old life and her new life. Oh, well, the three things we've talked about have, there's some through lines in yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Especially the two of yours. And mine's not that far off. Yeah, But there absolutely. just isn't a second man in it is the only problem. A lot of love triangles. A lot of the past and the future. So I'm really excited to watch this again. I watched it while I was doing my nails one time and ended up just like sobbing while trying to do my nails. And it was... Uh, uh, the name of your autobiography. Yeah. Sobbing, sobbing while, while doing, doing my, my nails. nails. Um, so yeah. So I can't wait for next week when you let me know what you thought of it. And do you know where people can watch this? Is, is, is it an easy one to find? It is not. Mm. So um, this one, for some reason, was only really released in the States. Um, I had to go through the back channels to find it because for some reason, even though it has like a very popular Canadian actor, Simu Liu, in it, it wasn't really released in Canada. Distribution deals, man. They're all junk. So weird because Simu Liu is like a big deal. Um, this was pre-Barbie movie, but um, he's been in quite a few things. He was just in that Marvel movie and uh, I feel like it would have done really well in Canada. So um, you might have to check uh, your local library or... Uh, or message us. We'll get you a copy. We'll get you a copy. That's, that's a, we should go back to doing that. Now that we're not sponsored, we don't have to worry about... Oh, true. Yeah. ...doing stuff. So if you really need one, you know what? Message us. We'll send you a link or something. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was really uh, kind of sad that it wasn't fully released and didn't get the the like big release in Canada that it should have. It should have. Or should maybe. Have. We'll see. We'll see. We'll determine that next week. Next week. Whoa, was this a really short episode? Oh, yeah. We were really like speedy and on it. I usually ramble a lot longer on my movies, but I was you can't give away the ending or anything. Spoiler free. Okay, well, we'll see you next week when we talk about 2023's One True Love. Oh, it's going to be so romantic. So romantic. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.